West St Kilda, 1934, by Ridge Boyd. I still have the St Kilda Park State School photograph of the preps grade in 1934, where I'm wearing a shirt, jumper, socks and pants that my mother made. In the photograph, it is obvious that some pupils were doing it tougher than us during the Depression, but proudly wearing their Empire Day medallions. Every Empire Day on the 24th of May, all the local schools walked to the Palais Theatre to get a medal, a bag of lollies and a free picture show. In the first few weeks at school, I arrived home in the middle of the morning and my mother asked why I was home. I said I was home for lunch, but she said it was only playtime. I cried and I thought I would get the strap if I went back and my mother had to take me back and explain it to the teacher. When my brother was in preps in 1933, local pupils would not use Deacon Street as they feared there was a bad man there who killed and skinned little boys and hung their skins up to dry, so they used Cowderoy Street. Fortunately, it was safe in 1934 to use Deacon Street again when I started school. I was born in 1929 and sometime shortly after the November 1929 stock market crash, my grandparents took the lease on a large boarding house at 38 Park Street, West St Kilda, with our mother helping them. Our family of four slept in a front bedroom with the grandparents in the other front room. Boarders occupied two other rooms and three bungalows at the back. I vividly remember two specific events in 1934. Firstly, on the 18th of May, Lord Huntingfield, who was the new governor of Victoria, arrived at St Kilda Pier for a trip along Beaconsfield Parade to Government House. A crowd from the boarding house went down to Beaconsfield Parade to watch him pass. However, I was not impressed and said, he is only in a gig, not knowing that it was the official state coach and horses. On January of that year, we had been on holiday to MacArthur, which was my mother's hometown, staying with a sister whose house in the main street had kerosene lighting and a horse and gig for transport. Secondly, in November, after a great storm, our father took us down to Pier Road to see many yachts smashed from their moorings against the bluestone walls. It was near this point, opposite Cowderoy Street, that my father taught me to swim, but now the water is more than 100 metres further out because of silting. West St Kilda was a good swimming beach then, with a life-saving club and a diving platform offshore, to which I would dog paddle to and sunbake on. I could not speak very well when young, and used to point and say, Dit Dit, which gave me the nickname Dit. When finally I talked, I used to mimic the paper boys outside the Beaconsfield Hotel with their Herald Star, Herald Calls, and my first song was Red Sails in the Sunset. Every weeknight I would listen to the Smile Away Club on 3DB at 10 to 7 with Charlie Ford and his gang and would join in their theme song, 10 to 7 be bright and gay, 10 to 7 smile away, etc. But I was not taught to read or write before I went to school and in the first week we were given basic books to read. I failed to read any. A crash course followed in reading and writing, starting with the comics in the Herald. There was Mandrake the Magician and his servant Lothar, Tim Tyler and Spud Murphy for the Ivory Patrol and Ben Boyang and his gang. Then followed the Castle's Book of Knowledge Encyclopedia set, which I avidly read, so I was rapidly caught up with others in the class. I have many memories of 1934, particularly the annual police picnic on the Waruna paddle steamer to Queenscliff, listening to the police pipe band on the deck or down in the engine room to watch the gleaming pistons and gushing steam. At Queenscliff, we had a picnic and races 
and I won a wooden boat made in Japan as my prize. The first time I sailed it in my hot bath, the glue melted and it fell apart. It was fun travelling to Port Melbourne by cable tram to the end of Bay Street as it was to travel on to the dental hospital in Spring Street, Melbourne. A yearly highlight was the Old Buffers Charity Carnival along Armstrong Street with floats, bands and fancy dress performers followed by rides, raffles and stalls in Albert Park. The main attraction was the annual challenge football match between those living on the south side of Armstrong Street against those living on the north side. My brother and I spent a lot of time playing in Katani Gardens or the playground on the corner of Cowderoy Street and Canterbury Road on the swings and seesaws. The swings remained but the seesaws disappeared years ago. We also played in the tips in Albert Park or at the lake where we caught yabbies in a secret place, taking them home for our mother to cook and all to share. On Friday nights, we would walk to the South Melbourne market to buy up all the specials for the week and usually fruit and vegetables from the Chinese market gardeners. Our father would put the shopping in Hessian bags and catch the tram home using his police concession ticket while we all walked home again unhindered by shopping. We sometimes also walked to Port Melbourne to look at the large ships in port and to see the fishermen with their large baited circular nets which attracted large shoals of white bait, often trapping hundreds with each cast. In retrospect, 1934 was a good year.